Nobody joins in with me on jazz oh, hands. Oh, I do too. You okay, there you go. Second. Okay, there you go. Jazz hands. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hex Strange. We're live from the Big Daddy Gun Studio. Today, we're talking, what's the point of cleaning my guns? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's the topic. Because oh. I'm, not, I'm not about it too much, really. Yeah, oh. so I figured it would be a good time to put Chris is like, what? What the hell? <laughs> so I figured it would be a good time to talk about what's the point of cleaning our guns when we have the president of France CLP. <laughs> what's up? Uh, Chris, Chris Bartagone. <laughs> I, I figured we'll bring Chris on and we'll talk about what's the point of cleaning our guns while Chris is here. So, Walter. You, I clean my guns. Come on. Yeah, Walter, you you met Chris. I don't know if you remember. You met yeah. Chris at was, the at the NFA review shoot. Yes, yes. Yeah. It was it was hot that day. It was a hectic time. We had we had tents flying around. There were things being dropped yeah. from the sky. It was right. a hectic yeah. time. <laughs> I think you also met Babyface there, Chris. Sure did. Um, right. Sure did. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if Babyface remembers this because he had an incident on the way home. Uh, I blocked that whole day out of my memory. He, he might have lost some brain cells. <laughs> oh boy. If you want to know, we have a video up right now about it, which I, I nicknamed this video when pigs fly. <laughs> so you guys so you guys can go look for the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. So um Chris. Yes. Thanks for coming on the show. Did I get your name right? Uh Bartagone? You did. You nailed it. Okay, so that's because you trained me before we started. So we didn't have to tell you that. You could have yeah. just. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? You're here. You're from Rand CLP. So I think let's uh, let's start with uh, what's the origin of Rand CLP? How'd you guys uh, How'd you guys get going here? <clears throat> so the product itself has been around since 2012. Um, we it was designed for firearms um back in 2012 the company was uh under a different kind of uh, different leadership group uh, and um 2012 is when it was created 2013 is when we started getting involved with the firearms industry it's when the first year we ended up at shot show we were walking around um if those of you are familiar with the product you'll see that it's branded with VTAC all over the place, Viking Tactics. Um, right. You know, we knew that we had a great product, but we were a product in a sea of firearm product. Yeah, firearm with, a, with a whole bunch of, yeah, because yeah. everybody and their mama makes a lubricant now. Of course, yeah, Liberal Tears, uh, Snake Venom. Yeah, whatever. you know, I got to talk about, and plus, I forgot this. I forgot Coconut to, oil. Yeah, plus I forgot <laughs> to mention, the reason why we're giving Chris such a hard time is because Rand CLP, does sponsor the Hank Strange situation <laughs> up until today. Like maybe tomorrow, no. Won't. You never know. You never know. <laughs> tomorrow, that, like, that's it, Hank. Because <laughs> um, we came on. But yes, so everyone is making something, and you guys were kind of like. So we, so we knew we had something just because of the testing that we had done uh, at the time. So we went to SHOT Show. We're walking around, and this was pre me so i wasn't there but the story goes um right. walking around shot show one of the guys this, there go ahead. i'm sorry can we mention mike oh yeah but it wasn't mike either oh, so it wasn't mike. Was, okay this was pre all of us <laughs> oh um, okay so uh two of the guys were walking around they noticed that kyle lamb was walking and one of the guys says that's who you need to get the product in front of mm. have him take a look at it so, so we approach Kyle so for Lamb. guys for, for people who don't know who Kyle Lamb is, can you just hit us up with that real quick? I would I would smack somebody if that's the case. <laughs> but, so the way it was explained to me, because I'll be honest with you, and ho if he's watching this, sorry, dude. But when he was explaining to me, I was like, "Who's Kyle Lamb?" They're like, "Oh, he's the Derek Jeter of this industry." So Kyle Lamb is um, former Special Forces, uh, retired uh, Delta Force operator who was in uh, Somalia. Um, you know, he's a pretty big, pretty big deal in the in the military um, special forces community. Uh, he was in he was there for Black Hawk Down that whole incident. Uh, right. Once he retired from the military, he went on to create his company Viking Tactics. But right. um, and, and and he's very serious, right? He's not like you know there are some people who just will just jump out there and endorse anything. He's not one of those dudes. No, he's definitely not one of those dudes. Salt of the earth, dude, as well. Like just pure great guy. Um, <clears throat> and 
So we approached him and, you know, he was like, oh man, like he didn't want to do it. He was like, all right, I'll give these guys a, a you know, a price tag or a price stick that they're just going to say, forget yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So he gave us the price to consult and test our product thinking that he was going to, we were going to say no. And no, we didn't. We like, yep, sure you go write the check. And he was like, crap. All right. Well, I'll make this product fail in two weeks because I know how to make it fail and then I'll be done with it. Mm -hmm. Two months later, we have no communication back from Kyle. So he reaches, we reach out to him and we're like, hey, you know, we kind of need to get some answers here. And he's like, there's a problem. And so at the time they were like, well, what's the problem? He's like, I can't get the product to fail. I need more time. <laughs> so, so we're, you know, the companies that they're like jumping for joy going on. This is awesome. He took it overseas. He had some training to do in Poland. He was like, they were sticking it in banks of snow, leaving it overnight. And right. they couldn't get this stuff to fail. So from then on, uh, from that point on, he kind of hooked us up with another company that he does some work with, seeing if they were interested in kind of uh, branding it their lube. Uh, it didn't work out. So at that point, he kind of said, all right, well, we'll go in with you and we'll partner with you on it. So that's how the partnership was born with Kyle Lamb from Viking Tactics. Field tested, approved it. Yeah, I mean, Kyle uses it in his beard. I've heard tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we started that one last week, but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, you know, it's been a great partnership. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, and he'll probably he'll he'll agree with me. Uh, we've probably underused him a, as a spokesman for us. You know, we we haven't done a whole heck of a lot. Um, but that, you know, that was 2013 and, and kind of ran, just kind of chugged along. And we had our flagship product, Ram CLP, out there. Uh, 2014, you know, and we were in Cabela's and we had dis uh, distribution network and we had a dealer network going. Um, at the time, we had, we had worked with some um, sponsored shooters out there. Uh, we were working with Julie Golub at the time, Anthony Cruz, Matt Holmes, you know, and, and we were just, the, the product was out there. Right. Um, and uh, 2014, we launched the um, the Ranborn Bolt. Um, Kyle was it was an important part of that. I mean, he obviously he actually gave the name Born Bolt. We were just going to call it Ran Bolt, um, and he he's like, nah, it sounds better this way. So we launched that in 2014. Then um, towards the end of 2014, the, uh, the upper echelon of the company decided that. Um, going after the military was the way to go. They said, we don't, you know, we don't really need to go after retail anymore. Just focus on getting the product into the military and they will buy 55 gallon drums every hour. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody will swim in money. Yes. This is like my <laughs> least favorite words to hear from any firearms manufacturer or accessories maker. Let's go after the military. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that didn't really work out. So, um, that was probably for about a year. They focused on that. It really didn't pay off. So at the end yeah. of 2015, um, they, you know, they started building that infrastructure back to, to continue on the path that we were once on as far as dealers and distribution. Um, and that's where we've been for the past year and a half. Uh, I had always, I had, I was gone probably right around that time when they decided to make that transition. I had been recruited and I went to work for a company called Dewey Rods and uh, was a great opportunity for me because I was able to bring Rand in and partner up with, uh, with Dewey Rods. And now, you know, you got to get some precision firearms, cleaning accessories, partnered with the best lube out in the market. It was a no brainer. Yeah. Um, but I'd always been involved even since then. I did some consulting work for him and still helped him out. And then uh, I had the opportunity to, to come back in uh, this year and take over and make sure that we were on the right path to, to grow. Okay. And absolutely. So, so very cool. So there's a couple of things I want to unpack here. There's sure. a lot of cool, there's a lot of things in there. Now you've, you've been in, you've been in, in the firearms industry for a while. Let, let's go back to the going after the military. What, like how do people keep falling into that trap, man? What, what's the deal? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you, well, why is I'm, that so? Why is that so sweet and delicious looking from afar? And I'll, and and I'll tell you. And, and I even looked down that road when I ended up at Dewey Rods. So and I and so and I'll tell you why. So mm -hmm. if you look at it from Rand's point of view, the product that the military is using for their CLP, because if you mention CLP, 
and anybody has any military experience, they say, oh, yeah, I've used it forever. And it's good for us because they think that we're talking about our product. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, yeah, I've used that forever. Okay, no, th that's an old <laughs> ant. Sorry about that. And that's okay. Going crazy. Uh, <laughs> the, it's an old antiquated formula, right? So it's, it, it's been around since the dawn of time. It's toxic. It smells. It, you know, don't get it on your clothes. It melts through, like, the acid from aliens. And, the, you know, so it's just a, it's just a, it's an old product. And so there's new technology out there. And our product is, a, you know, it's a non-toxic firearm lubricant oh. built on a nanoparticle platform. So it's got some new technology. So okay. we figure, well, you know, we can help the army along here by coming up with a newer product, new technology. It'll, it'll be better for them. But, you know, that's a huge lift. Same thing, Dewey Rods. I mean, you know, there's, been a, there's a company out there that's had the contract for those, the kits that they're given. Every soldier is given this, this cleaning kit. And I said, <laughs> okay, well, you know what? That kit, all I hear is that it sucks, and there yeah. should be something better. So, you hear you that from you hear that from everyone, but they'll they'll never do anything about it. Nope, nope. Well, no. yeah. At the end yeah, of the I mean, day, it comes down to who you know and how much money you can. Yeah. Use. Yeah. How many hookers can you get on your yacht? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting off yeah. quick here. <laughs> so that I, you know, and I can't. A formula. I, <laughs> I can't, I can't speak for all of the companies, but I can speak <laughs> for the one that I worked for and then the one that I went to work for, and I tried to take that road again. Um, yeah. Now, I'm sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that people will want to know, like, hey, what's the difference here? The reason why I wanted to bring uh, Walter from Safety Harbor and then Babyface on is because when we met you guys, it was kind of the same thing, you know, where um, I, I actually found out about this through Mike, and... Um, you know, and he was like, hey, you got to try this stuff. And people, man, every time I go to any kind of gun show, somebody puts, tries to put lube in my hands. And it's not, it's not as good a thing as you think it would be. No, no. <laughs> and you're right, because we come back to that point that we made before, right? That there's a yeah. new firearm lubricant coming out. So, you know, it's funny. So that year and a few months that we were kind of under the radar, Certain companies that they, they didn't make it. So when 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 we started, our main competitors like we were we were up against Frog Lube, right? Mm -hmm. We were up against Italian Gun Grease. We were up against Fire Clean, Slip Two Thousand. Um, you know, a lot of these other ones. Frog Lube is still there, and you know the the, the folks over at Frog Lube. I mean, they're they're friends. I got to know yeah. them. And, and some well. of these things, I mean, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with them. There's there's lots no. of different options here. There, oh, there's a done, there's a yeah. bunch of different options. And somebody right. once told me. You're not. There's enough room for everybody in this industry. The only time you compete is when you're going after a government contract. And with that being said, you know. So you look at where some of those. So Italian Gun Grease, they're out of business. Um, you know, Fire Clean has had their fair share of people. You know, saying it's whatever and it's this, that, and the other thing. So you know, and then you've had some new companies emerge, and you've had your, you know your liberal tears that smells like bacon and you have some other mm -hmm. new stuff coming out. And I guarantee you by SHOT Show, there will be another yeah. firearm lubricant that will come out. Well, and then the big problem with this, I mean, um, and, and I see, you know, living here in the South and having a lot of friends that their names start with Bubba or something, you know, <laughs> like um, one of my good friends, his name is Bubba Roadkill and, you know, oh, Bubba boy. This thing. and that thing, they're like, yeah, I just used, you know, motor oil. <laughs> oh God! So, so that just you know, there's out. there's lots of different there's lots of different things here. You know, I think in the case of uh, Fire Clean and maybe even Frog Loop, not putting any words in your mouth, but there was some things out there that are just stuff that you could already find that people feel like, hey, this is stuff that's already out there and it's repackaged. So it's you know, there's kind of this kind of like uh, I hate to say it, but snake oil thing going on. And I know for us, we were worried about that. I think what what because and I don't want to just you know go with something because people are like, hey, you know, here's our thing. And so for me, <laughs> I really took, I took uh, a lot of time to like test this out. I know uh, people came, Mike came and, uh, and spoke to us and Tim, all, you know, different guys from the company came through and spoke to us about things and showed us how to use it. And then we, we've been for a long time using it, actually, you know, applying these things to 
to different things that we do. We've been using it on suppressors, guns, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I just wanted to cover, it's, it's hard to show people that we've been trying to do it over like the last six months, I think, or, or longer here, but you know, how is this different? So, and again, I, you know, we've never been, um, we've never been the company to sit there and, and talk bad about another company to make ours look good. What I can tell you about Ram CLP is that our product is made from base ingredients, okay? It's like if you were baking a cake in the kitchen, you grab all the ingredients and you make your cake. It, ours is made from raw materials. That's why we're able to come up with the pricing that we can, and that's why we're able to have this product. It was built for firearms. Um, some stuff out there is just bought, put it in another bottle, relabeled, and called something else, and then called the product, and it goes out for sale. Again, not you know that's not what we do. That's not what we're about. Um, you brought up motor oil, so let me just kind of uh, – touch on that you know I go out there and um, I've done this demo time and time again and it comes up as the uh, why the beard looks so good uh, I've eaten this stuff I'll sit there at the end of a spiel and I'll pour it right in my mouth and eat it and uh, it, and it while well, people are like oh gosh you know that's crazy it, it's to portray that you know you, when you put it on a firearm and you and that stuff burns off you get blowback in your face and it's to show you that it's non-toxic right well motor oil is carcinogens and mm -hmm. having motor oil on your firearm while it will lube the firearm you don't want to breathe any more carcinogens yeah. in. i think some people might ask the question like hey i don't want to be able to eat the this thing because you know it's going on a gun and i want it to to do to do some kind of job but yes the, the point if you know if you shoot guns you've got stuff blowing back at you you're inhaling it you know right etc right Right. So, so, you know, so so that's kind of that part of it, because I know you brought up motor oil. But, you know, as far as other products out there and what's going to come up next, there's always going to be something that comes up next. I mean, our product is built on a nanoparticle platform. Um, nobody else out there is infused nanoparticles, and that's a proprietary process. But, you know, it takes our, our CLP and it makes it a penetrating cleaner, not just a surface cleaner. Those nanoparticles, metal is very porous on a microscopic level. So mm -hmm. if you picture like the Grand Canyon, you know, uh, the, the, the nanoparticles get into the pores of that metal and that pulls out carbon that you weren't getting before. And then once yeah. it heats up, it forms a bond with the metal and it creates a shield. So you're not penetrate carbon's not penetrating deep into the pores. Bottom line is it makes you clean less, shoot more. In okay. the day, that's, that's what we want. Right. So now just to go back to something that you said there. So motor oil is like carcinogenic, you're saying? Yes. Oh, okay. So for folks out there using motor oil, that's not a good idea. Yeah, you don't want. Yeah, you don't want to use motor right. oil. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just not something. That, yeah. Granted, again, if you just want to lube it and and have something just sitting there lubed, great. But if you want to operate the firearm, we have enough. Like you said, you know, you, you, you the ammo that you're using, there's there's lead. Maybe using lead-free projectiles. You know, maybe using completely lead-free ammo. But at the end of the day. Probably not. There's still a little bit of lead in that primer, and that's that's what stays there in your face. The projectile goes down range, so you you got lead there. You don't need to add more. <laughs> yeah. You know. So let's go, let's go back to the premise of the show. I mean, you know, what is the point of of cleaning our guns? You know, you got some old school guys. We've got Walter here who represents oh, stop, the old school. Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> some old school dudes like Walter. Walter, do you okay? Do you clean your guns? Answer like tell tell us truthfully here. Yeah. How often are you cleaning stuff? Well, you know, you can be you can be anal retentive cleaner too, where you don't you clean things just because you think it needs. <laughs> Look, if I'm shooting non corrosive ammo and I get back from the range, and I'm in a hurry to do something, I don't stop the world and clean guns. Sorry, I don't do it. Um, if I'm shooting old school uh, corrosive ammo, then I'll make a or black powder stuff like that. I'll stop what I'm doing and at least run a pass through the bore and give it a quick hosing down. Um, but I. I there are times when I, I pull it out and yeah, it's dirty, you know. It's but it's not dirty where it's not going to function. Not like that. I mean, nothing like that, you know. So, right. Okay. I mean, it takes it takes a lot of shooting to make it. Well, except for an AR-15, it makes a it takes a lot of shooting to make it non-functioning. You know, it's. Um, but if I have something, I can hose it down with it, wipe it off real quick. 
I, I'm better. You know, I'm, I'm good. So right. Well, yeah. you know, there's a and again, a lot of stuff is just passed on. I mean, you know, an AR will run dirty or it'll run dry, but it won't ride run dry. Won't run dry, dry and dirty. dirty. No, it won't. Um, so you know, there, there's been times when it's dirty. You add some lube to it, and you get it runs get back up. Right. Um, so, you know, Walter made a good point. Uh, I mean, it, you know, if I go shooting on a Monday, am I going to go crazy and go cleaning if I know that I'm shooting on a Wednesday? No, I'm going to put a little bit more rand on it, keep it yeah. wet, and keep it, and just get back on the range. Lube it up and yeah, lube it up and, and go. But if I know that something's I'm done shooting that, and I'm not going to shoot that one for a while, then I'll right. you know I'll give it that full clean. Yeah. Um, but to, I guess to answer your question of why, you know, why do you, should you clean your guns? I mean, and, you know, at the end oh, of the day. Just plain old corrosion, you know, if you leave it, if anything's worth anything and it starts rusting externally, then it's going to lose value. So Right, and it, right. And we have one of the best corrosion inhibitors in the, on the market. Um, you know, the, this thing, we, we have passed the 100-hour uh, the salt spray test, which is a military test. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a crazy quite like, Look, I know that I usually start cleaning when, when things get into trouble. Now, when I first got into guns, I did that thing. Like every time I shot it, mm -hmm. I was cleaning it because I was all crazy. <laughs> you know, then the more gut, but that's, that's fine when you have one gun. Right. You know? when I come up to your place and I bring 20 guns and then I you know spend half the day cleaning guns when I get back. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that isn't so. That isn't fun. And then I think there's people out there. You know, we've got new technology going into guns. You got a lot of polymer, lots of different metals and coatings and things like that. So, I mean, do you really? You don't really have to clean all the time, right? You don't have to clean every time you use the gun. No, no. Uh, you know, it, no. It really it depends on how dirty the firearm is. I mean, if you go and you, and you go to the range and you shoot fifty rounds, you shoot a hundred rounds. Do you need to clean it? No, you don't need to clean it. But you know, if you're going out or if you're going out there to, to zero something in, you're taking five shots. No, yeah. don't recommend it. But so now here's a question. When you first get something, so let's say you buy a Glock or whatever, you know, whatever gun it is you, you buy, you're into SIGs, whatever, Smith & Wesson, you buy something. When you first get it, should you clean it, take off whatever is there, and then treat it with whatever you believe in, trust, or use? Yeah, I, I, I would definitely do that. Um, I, you know, I picked up a P320 recently and um, the, the, you know, they, they ship from SIG with white lithium grease on the takedown lever. And, you know, maybe it's because I have delicate little fingers or, you know, I'm just a little delicate <laughs> here, but I couldn't get that takedown lever without using the end of the mag to turn. So mm -hmm. I popped it out. I took the board, the the, uh, the ram borne bolt. I sprayed it down, cleaned off all the white lithium grease, and then you know I put the hog grease on it, and the thing just glides now. So you know, freeze up. So yeah, I would definitely recommend you know if you're gonna if you're gonna get a new gun and you're gonna give this ram product a try, then strip it down with the borne bolt. Treat it up with the Ram CLP or hog grease, whichever one you prefer, and and run it that way. Yeah. So now I just want to turn to Babyface because Babyface is like our resident. I'm going to say whatever the hell comes to mind, <laughs> right? So so Patrick, What's you know, um, you were there when we started messing around with this stuff. What was your experience? What did you think about it? And what did you deal with before? What did you use before? So so when uh, when we got all of the the Rand stuff in. I think that was right after everything went down with fire clean and all that where everybody's like oh it's just coconut oil so and, and I, i'm of the internet generation where i'm skeptical of anything anytime anybody tells me anything i'm totally skeptical like i don't believe anything ever um so i was like you know we got all the products in, all the stuff in and i was i was like oh yeah it's, it's just lube it's all the same um but i ended up i so what really turned me on to it is i ended up using it on my suppressors um i have a, a monocore uh, my Liberty Mystic is a monocore design, and when that thing gets gunky, it is hard as hell to pull that thing apart. Um, I stuck hog grease on the rails, like on the the top and bottom of the monocore, and after four or five hundred rounds, it like it was still tough. Obviously, it's going to be tough, but it was noticeably easier to take apart. Right, and um, I've noticed that uh, cleaning the inside of the tube, so the tube will get, you know, the tube gets fouled as well. Mm -hmm. 
um, taking a brush to the inside of the tube, the stuff tends to come off a little easier. Um, it stays a little more liquid, I guess you could say. It, it doesn't like cling to the inside of the tube quite as bad. Um, so I, I like it. I use it on all my stuff. I've gotten to the point now where I use it for everything. And it's not because it was given to me for free. <laughs> it Honestly, like I really like using it. Like uh, we disposed of a whole box of, of old lube that we had sitting around. And I, was, I looked at it and I was like, I don't even want this in my garage. I'm going to give it to somebody else because I don't want this crap. Yeah. Yeah, so let me just hit up with a quick question. Uh, the Tyvin Show wants to know if every thousand rounds is a good general rule to follow. I'm terrible. <laughs> thousand, <laughs> thousand, thousand rounds of Tula? I don't know, man. You better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it depends on what round. Yeah, it really, it really rounds. does. I, I've, yeah. I've seen some Israeli stuff that's nasty too. I mean, it fires good and it runs good, but when you when you when you, I always joke that when you're shooting, it's like ground up prisoners. Being for, <laughs> it just stinks. It's like ah, but yeah. Ground, I like that one. Ground up prison is okay. <laughs> I use other words, but I won't use them on the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, well, okay. Um, so, so the thing is, is now like, uh, what do you think? Like, dudes who build fifties should they be using some oh. kind of lube? <laughs> sure, definitely. Because <Yeah. laughs> Walter. <laughs> Walter, what do, do you want to add something to this? Because I know you have been using this stuff as well, right? So, uh, yes, yes, and no. Yeah, in the on my guns, like when we go shooting and the ARs and the machine guns and stuff. Yes, you've seen me do that. Where I show up and it's all dry. And I actually, I like. <laughs> I don't probably use the proper one. I use the um, the one that's like a general purpose lube, and the um, the bore and bolt. The bore and bolt. No, the other the actually, the other, it's actually not even the gun stuff. It's not labeled as firearm stuff. It's, oh, oh, it's the stuff that it's like, um, oh, it's in like a green and black bottle, I think. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like teal or light green. Right. Well, it's in a spray bottle. I have a bottle of it. Spray me. bottle. Yeah. And I just, I give everything a good hosing down and we go at it, you know. And, you know, yeah. In the shop, when I'm test firing, I use a variety of things because what I'm doing is just basically running a pass through the bore after I fire it. So, it's not necessarily like a cleaning cleaning. It's because it's just to keep it from rusting or corroding or anything like that after we test fire. So right, because when you test fire, you're putting just like one or two I rounds. Put, I just put that. one round through to make sure it goes bang, like it did this afternoon. So <laughs> it's yeah. a good day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I've done oh, thousands of them. So. I wonder if you guys still sell that one. Um, the general. Yeah, yeah, it's in a green. It's, it's a green and white bottle. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a lighter colored green. The yeah. the, um, X, the XG10. Yeah. Yeah. Might might have been. Yeah. 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 I mean, so how did, how does that differ from Warren Bolton stuff? So that's a that's a penetrant. So that's actually that's not even part of our firearms division. That's right, part right. of our uh, the the house home Household, division. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's. I think that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Looking so, for a <laughs> so yeah. So X. So Rand Rand CLP is the firearms division of our parent company, which is XG Industries, which okay. we make a uh, a household lubricant called uh, XG10, which is mm -hmm. you know like a like a WD40 but on steroids. Right. Yeah. So um, somehow yeah. we got some of that stuff to test too. We've been throwing that in. Yeah, I've, I've been using. I, it. I love it. I use it on. I've been using it all over around the house. Yeah. It goes on it. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so you know, this will uh, – you can use this, which is, you know, kind of next level above that XG10. Okay. Okay. Um, but, I mean, if the XG10 is working for you, I mean, but it's just a – it's not a – it's not a firearm solvent. It's a penetrant. It's not, yeah, it's not firearm specific. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, um, so you can use that on tools or whatever you want to. I'll yeah. tell you what, one thing the bore and bolt does also. It like, it, if, you, if you've got a guy that paints his – his AK with cheap charcoal grill paint, it'll take it right the hell off. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, remember, the, remember the Sten gun? Yes, that's something you've done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's something. So, so here's a question, Chris. How is this different from everything else that's toxic uh, when, it, when, it, when it burns off as a smoke? I mean, because uh, I think we're getting some comments that if it comes off in a smoke, it's still toxic because you're, it, you're breathing it in. So is that true or? Well, but what's coming off as a smoke? Motor oil? So, or, I mean, uh, no, point? like, um, so. So our, I mean, our flashpoint on this is over 600 and 
I think 607 degrees. I'll have to, I'll pull up the exact number. Yeah, but, I, mean, I think I mean, I've seen with the, um, with the hog grease, if you're like, for example, you're shooting it from a suppressor, you get some white smoke comes out of that right in the beginning. Hank, are okay. you talking about what happens when the, uh, the, 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 the ran bore and bolt actually burns off the, what is Yeah. It? Yeah. It, how is it not toxic versus toxic? I mean, yeah, exactly. Well, because yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, what's it's what your base material is so it's what your base material is burning off like you know a comment in there where it says you know bacon <laughs> bacon burning you're breathing that i mean it's you know I, if bacon smokes and you're breathing it in is that is that toxic for you or i mean I don't know that that is or not. I think that so, depends on who you're talking well, to. Well, it, it all depends on the amount of If you're, if you're like a Muslim breathing. or something and you're breathing, well, you're right. in, you're breathing <laughs> in the bacon smoke. Yeah, but yeah. if you're now in violation. <laughs> if you breathe it all day long, you know, 24 7, yeah, it'll kill you. Yeah. You know. Or clog your arteries, either one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So you're, but basically, so the, the question there is, is it, toxic or not it's non-toxic right it's non-toxic it's an algae yeah. based with a flash point of 607 degrees fahrenheit so it's the you know it's the highest in the industry i mean you're yeah. not i mean i'm trying to avoid getting into the real super science stuff that's just going to get boring <laughs> and is, make me make what me is go it? to sleep yeah Here, here's a question for you what's the average uh temperature of an ar-15 when you've ran mag after mag through it i mean does it have you guys mags <laughs> well yeah i mean if you, know, you shoot two or three mags after you know hank that, has a nice has a nice burn on his arm from one of the suppressors and well that was just one magazine yeah <laughs> uh walter i am not sure what the uh the average temperature of well, that uh, might be something we have to do we might have to find that out yeah yeah okay <laughs> we'll let's do what, it what now what temperature we get um but uh yeah i mean without getting into science i mean it's the right. it's the, if if you don't have any toxic chemicals in there that right. when it burns off you're not breathing in anything toxic right Oh, okay. Uh, without kind of getting in there. Right. Okay. So let's uh, let's try to get some. If if folks have other questions here, you know, um, just bring those up to us. Now, what kind of um, what kind of testing have you guys done of this? So uh, so we've done both testing. Great question. And uh, we've done lab testing. Um, we've done. Uh, you know, when I first got there. I heard words thrown around like a, a four ball wear machine um, and lowest coefficient of friction. So we've done your traditional lab testing, right? Um, we've done pin and V testing, um, pin on disc testing. Um, and, and those are all great, right? Those are lab tests. Those are, those give you validity um, and those give you results. So when you do a four ball wear test and you can see where your coefficient of friction lies, where other products do. Not gonna go into details as what, but I'll just tell you that ours was extremely lower than everybody else's that was on the market at the time. Um, but the most important testing that I feel is guys like yourself, guys like Babyface, guys like Kyle Lamb that go out there, guys like Vince Buckles that go out there and they test this product in the field because you know, in a lab, you have controlled testing, right? I mean, you you know what yeah. you're looking for. Well, yeah, and, and sometimes it even takes time. Like um, I, I did a video, I think it was a couple months ago, where I had something else on there, um, actually frog lube. Yeah. And, 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 and if it sits there for any period of time, it just becomes like a jelly, it coagulates or something. Yep. You know, and so We've that's that. the thing. I mean, and we've been looking to see, like, you know, the things we've treated this with, do we have that same thing, which I haven't seen it. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that. Have you seen that, baby face? It doesn't gum up for me. Um, yeah. We haven't really done – I mean, it doesn't really get cold here, so we don't do any, like, cold weather testing of it. Yeah, we, we would have to get real – freezing. Once it gets down, to was, like, 30 degrees Fahrenheit yeah. if we're lucky. So we haven't tried anything like that. But, yeah, I, I've never had it gel up on me. And if I, I leave it on all my guns and – take the gun to the shoot to shoot and it works fine afterwards yeah yeah and that's the thing that i'm saying you know that the environment that it was in with the frog loop was right here it, it, you know, it didn't really go anywhere it was it was, it was gross <laughs> yeah it was pretty bad it's it pretty was, bad so so, so we, i went to go pick up the gun we had left it in it was sitting in the uh in the whatchamacallit just in the back area yeah and it, it was in a safe 
Right? Yeah, and he went yeah. to go pick it up, and it's like goopy and like this. Ah, it's horrible stuff coming off all over your hands, and ah, it, was, it was gross. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we're not trying to we're not trying to beat up on on any particular thing oh, out there. But I, I just said we don't beat up on you guys. Can beat up all you want. <laughs> I'll just sit here and smile and nod. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think the thing is. So let's talk about like how how do gun guys when they do get around to cleaning their guns, which some of them do it all the time. Some of them don't do it at all. How do they? How do how do gun guys typically do this, right? So we want to clean our guns. We either look around for stuff that's already there, and you use whatever is there. And if there's nothing there, then you start making up shit like, oh, let's use motor oil or whatever <laughs> else you happen to use, or you just go out to the store and then you pick up whatever is there at the store, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, because this is not a thing. Like, we think about a whole bunch of other things before we think about cleaning our guns, honestly, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. like take like taking a shower and get something to eat. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that uh, important things in life, <laughs> right? But exactly. but but this gun, your gun being clean and functional is going to become <laughs> real damn important when you need it. Well, of course, <laughs> I'll right? find I mean, a clean one somewhere. <laughs> You know, uh, every day we go out there and we carry a firearm in our waistband and and hope we never have to, to use it in a situation to defend ourselves or our loved ones. But if that happens, you want to pull the trigger and you want to make sure that it goes off and doesn't jam. Yeah, especially um, with what you carry, man. There's so many things. Remember, you're carrying this thing. It's on your body. There's oils in your clothing and lint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's worse right. than a belly button, a gun for lint. <laughs> yes. And, and, I'll t and I'll tell you, so, you know, we go out there and we buy ammo, right? And we're like, okay, well, this is the ammo that I'm going to carry every day. But how many guys go out there and buy a box and shoot, you know, shoot it before they carry it? Um, and so you, you pull the trigger on the firearm and you, and you hope that the ammo is going to function and it's going to work, right? But you can't really know if that bullet that's in the chamber is going to do that unless you pull the trigger. But what you can know is that the firearm is not going to jam up or gunk up or, you know, not run because it's just not clean or, yeah, it's, not or you know, it's not functioning properly. Yeah, you can make so sure that it functions properly. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I know how this goes, I think, for a lot of gun guys, right? They Let's say they they realize, oh, I need some lubricant. They're either going to order something mm -hmm. um, online, right? Or they're going to like run down to Walmart and whatever's in there. So, you know, let's talk about like where can people get your stuff? You know, what's the price comparisons and all that? Because I think that's the place where, you know, sometimes in a case like this, people might avoid getting something that's good, even if they know it's good, just because in this moment they're like, hey, I just got to get something and hit this thing up, you know? What yeah. do you guys say to that? Well, you know, I mean, you get the guys out there and we go back to the motor oil thing, say, oh, I buy a quart of motor oil. It lasts me forever and it costs me $5. Okay, listen, I mean, if we're talking about $5 compared to a two-ounce bottle, that is less than 10 you know, you're, you're trusting your life to something and you want to make sure that, it, you, you know, you're not adding any more junk. So really, for for people to find us, you can find it on Brownells. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it in local dealers. Um, you know, we have a great dealer network out there. Um, you can find it on Viking Tactics website. You can find it on our website. I mean, you can find the product and if you can't find it make sure you you know ask your dealer to to bring some in um so that's that answers the first question of you know where where you can find it um you know as far as what they're looking for and and why should they get it or how they're going to find it i mean you know that's one of the things that we're we're focusing on now is making sure that people know that it's the it's the product that you should be using and you know, and, and that it works. I mean, there's a reason why it's been branded and approved by Kyle Lamb from Viking Tactics. I mean, that's a guy who knows firearms, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he shot a lot of firearms and he knows what's good and what's bad. And he's tested other firearms out there, or other firearm lubricants out there. And that's why he said, well, two weeks, I'll make it fail. I know how to make it fail. Yeah, I think. I just, think go ahead, go ahead, Walter. I just thought of something. Corrosive ammo. What's the deal with that? Yay or nay? Up or down? Will it will it take? Will it clean the the um, corrosive salt? Yeah, the the problem. You know, after you shoot your gun, corrosive ammo. If you just clean it with 
put oil down the bore, you come back and it's still rusty. Yeah, um, you need something to to get rid of the salt. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, uh, it, I believe the bore and bolt will. Uh, I haven't had anybody reach out to us and say that they've had an issue with it. So, okay, okay. even well, even you, even some ammo that's not corrosive is more corrosive than say like some of the foreign ammo that's non corrosive is a lot more corrosive than American non corrosive <laughs> ammo. So. <laughs> right, there's <Yeah>. levels. <laughs> There's levels to it. So, right. um, you know, so here's the thing. Are, is this something that's available in, like, big box stores right now? Or, you know, basically uh, you, you'd you have to get it online in the big box online stores, right? Well, you, uh, you can get it online. Um, big box is something that's, uh, that's being talked about now. Um, you know, we – like, we were in Cabela's and then um, – you know, when we decided to go down the route of the military, we we stopped that relationship, uh, or that relationship stopped. So we're we're at the table talking again about that. So we'll see where 2018 leads us and what big box retailers that we will yeah. be in. But we also have to see what big box retailers are still around. Well, <laughs> as we yeah, go forward, uh, yeah, as they go, a, as we go forward. So that's a that's a fluid uh, market. Yeah. Yeah. So the best way for people to get it, to get it is to go to like Amazon, uh, Brownells. You said. I mean, you can, they, go to, can they buy it directly from you guys? Yeah, they can go ranclp.com. They can buy it direct from our website. They can buy it from VikingTactics.com. Their website has it. Um, you know, a, a lot of dealers are selling it. A lot of dealers are selling it online. Um, you know, we work with a crate club out there. You can get it through one of their one of those deals. Yeah, and I'm sure you can get it in your local gun store. I, I walked into yep. Big Daddy Guns. They have it in there. Yeah. You know, um, just yeah. just look around at your local gun store. I think one of the things is that if, you, if you're looking for different things, try this. You, you, you're saying it's the prices are comparable to other things that are out there. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, a four-ounce bottle, MSRP on it is $14.99. That four-ounce bottle, the, the RAND CLP, you know, a little goes a long way. That will last you. For a, for a while. Uh, now, yeah. I, and I say that with an asterisk, it really depends on how many guns you have and how much you right. shoot, but oh, shoot. it should add, like, so it should last a normal person a while. It should last Walter three months. <laughs> Maybe, if, if that. So now, can we just go over, because now I realize that there's some things that are not exactly in the uh, firearms line. So can we just go over, can you show us what's in the firearms firearms line and then tell us how we're supposed to properly use these things versus, you know, us just deciding how we want to use it. Sure. Well, I mean, you, you have the flagship product, uh, the RAND CLP. This is the um, non-toxic, nano-infused, cleaner lubricant protectant. Um, this is where it all started. Okay. Um, when we when we had this, it was a great lubricant. I'm, I'm sorry. It was a yeah, great lubricant, an amazing protectant, had some great corrosion inhibitors. Um, but it was a good cleaner, you know, it was a good cleaner. If you had something that was new and you were able to pre-treat it with the CLP, then you were good to go. Um, but if you had that really dirty firearm, something really caked on, you shot the Tula ammo, then, you know, you needed something a little bit stronger. So, um, we launched the Boren Bolt. Um, so the Boren Bolt is a non-toxic carbon cutting solvent. It's just designed to cut the carbon. Basically, it gets underneath it, lifts it up, so you can take it right off. That's so if you're, if you're taking your gun back down to clean, you would start with the bore and bolt? Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, if you, Yeah, if you were doing that. Or if you had just shot a boatload of ammo, suppressed something, and you, you had a lot of carbon buildup. Um, I run my guns wet, so, you know, even... I can pull apart my SIG now and um, it'll probably still be wet. I can go shoot a couple hundred rounds, open it up, and you just see the carbon sitting on top and you can just literally wipe it off. Um, so those are the first, th those are the two that I use the most. Okay. Um, then in 2016, we launched the, the hog grease. Uh, heavy applications, weapons, grease. There you go. Um, not a, I've, I've never been a grease guy. Um, never used it. Uh, but I have started to, and it's really good. So basically what I would recommend if someone was going to be storing their firearm for a while in a safe, definitely use the hog. Mm -hmm. uh, 
basically, you know, anything metal on metal, anything that slides, that glides. Okay. So now what if you, uh, you know, like a lot of us keep guns in the car, right? And then if, depending on where you are, so in Florida is a completely different environment from, let's say, Arizona or, you know, we've got different zones in the country. What, what do you guys recommend to do if you're storing guns in the car? Okay, Babyface is showing us. What is that, Babyface? Suppressor? Okay, yeah, the hog. <clears throat> yeah, suppressor, the, uh, the piston housing. You have to grease your piston housings. Hog grease works really well for it. Yeah. Um, I think it has a higher flash point than some of the other greases I've used. Yeah, it's pretty good for, for suppressors. It will smoke you. You'll, you'll get smoked out, but it's it does work really well. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys, uh, and I've heard this as we – you know, continue on this path. Um, people use the hog grease for the suppressors. People use them for the locking lugs on their on their uh, on their guns. Um, yeah. Their yeah. choke tubes, shotgun choke tubes. Uh, yeah. You know, lot, so a lot of different uh, applications. Uh, if, if you want to use a grease on a regular basis, uh, you know, I got a friend of mine who um, swears by grease, loves using just the grease. So. Okay. It also it also works as a good ablative fluid. So um, if you want to stage a suppressor with some sort of ablative fluid, you can take grease and grease the first couple of baffles, put it together, and it doesn't run out. Like uh, so, typically for an ablative, you would put like water in it, shoot like 20, 30 rounds, and then put more water in it. If you want a staged quiet suppressor, you can grease it, and it stays there pretty much indefinitely, um, unless you leave it out in the sun, and then maybe it would run a little bit. I don't know, but like the suppressors here. They don't move, run. Right. We don't well, leak I, anywhere. So. Gotcha. Flash. I mean, the flash point on the hog grease is 619 degrees. Yeah, it's again. not going to melt out in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not even the horrible Florida sun. Yeah. So what? So uh, you know, just to go back to what I was asking you, you know, what do you recommend someone do who is keeping a gun in the car? Uh, I mean, you can use the hog grease. I I do. I may or may not keep a firearm in the truck, and I have. I have depending on where CLP. you live or do not live, right. it will be legal or not legal. <laughs> I have ran CLP on mine. Um, so, like I said, I keep all, all of them there. And of course, everyone's going to say, "Well, of course you do. You work for the company. Why, well, what else would you say?" Um, but uh, you, you know, better be a, using. You better be using that. Right. There was there was a time that I didn't work for the company, but I still use the product and I still swore stood by it. So, uh, ran CLP. I would recommend keeping the firearm lubed with uh, with the ran. Yeah, but what do you so what do you guys think? Like if you if you are keeping a gun in the car, how often would you clean it? You know? Because I think like some people probably keep things in the car, but maybe they keep it in special bags and stuff like that. What if you're not doing that and you're just keeping it in the car in just a regular bag or well, some I, kind of Okay. You know? I mean, you know, I guess it's really it's it's really situation dependent. So I mean, you know, what does somebody keep a, a firearm in their in their vehicle for? I mean, I I, I have mine in a in a go bag in case shit yeah. hits the fan. So, you know, I check that every once a month. I make sure that it's still wet and it's still good to go. Yeah. I mean, you're not shooting it. I mean, if you, you know, so I, I guess it's a, it's a tough question. It really depends. Yeah. I, I know a lot of guys have truck guns and things like that. The, the thing right. is, is that if you, if you, let's say you have a truck gun, you have something there and you keep it there, but you forget it, <laughs> you know, you are right. running a risk, right? You, yeah, you definitely are. So you want to just make sure that it's just like, you know, I guess checking the oil. You check your oil once yeah. a month. Check your truck yeah. gun once a month. Well, you know? yeah, you know, regardless whether you got grease or oil or whatever, you just got to pull it out and sometimes take air hose and just blow it off. Sure. I mean, yeah. you know, it's going to collect things, you know. It's just the nature of the beast. So Exactly. Make yeah. sure there's not a wad of dirt stuff down the bore or, a, right. you know. Yeah. Okay, and then also 50 Stitches Steel is asking us about boar snakes. What do you guys think about boar snakes? Good, not good? Um, I mean, you know, I went and, like I said, I work for a firearms uh, a cleaning manufacturer called Dewey Rods afterwards. So uh, do I think a boar snake or a, a equivalent thereof has a purpose? Sure, I do. But – Anytime you can use a cleaning rod, I recommend using a cleaning rod. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm with you there. A nylon coated one piece cleaning rod uh, just makes life so much easier. Yeah, uh, you're, at, you're, you're at the range and you get a you get an empty stuck in your chamber and stuff like that. You've got to have a rod to knock it out. So. Yeah, yep. and and nylon coated, I guess, would be really important, right? Because because you're saying not every cleaning rod is 
is coated with something. Um, uh, correct. I mean, you know, you got those, you got some stainless steel rods. I mean, there's a bunch of different kind of rods out there. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I go with what I know and, uh, the Dewey rods have been just a staple. Okay. And time. then the nylon coating, I guess, is preventing you from messing up the bar, the, uh, the, the barrel threads? Correct. Rifling. It's rifling, called rifling. Excuse rifling. rifling. Excuse it's me. called rifling. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Walter. Yes. Rifling. Thank you for that. <laughs> for that. Thank you for that save, for that rescue. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to slam you hard. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's good for that, right? So, I mean, are you, are you really running a danger of messing up the rifling if you're, uh, if you're using, like, stainless steel? Oh, stainless if you use steel. stainless steel and you beat on it with a hammer to, to do something, yeah, you can scratch you it. You really got to do abusive you, stuff to... Yeah, you have to be really abusive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but every, every, it, it all, I guess it all depends on the weapon, too. I mean, if you've got your your bench rest rifle, you want to be real careful yeah. with it. Yeah, I mean, one little nick could do anything you, there. If you're cleaning your, your 1022 that you go out and shoot cans with, you know, I don't know. You know, it's just, right. that's just me though so. yep no and you're i think you're 100 percent right you know dewey rods i mean they they became who they are because of that bench rest right. um precision and rifles and precision rifle group um so that's just kind of where it is yeah and they have the they have their ways and you know and that's the way it is and you know correct <laughs> <laughs> okay cool so now uh one of the questions that we get all the time is there a shelf life on the Rand CLP, well, that's, a, that's a good question. And good, is it is it affected by if it's stored in, in in hot temperatures or or you know? Yeah, I leave it in the garage all the time. Yeah, of course it will. So so we typically typically tell people a shelf life of three years. Um, and will it last longer than three years? Yes. Is it dependent on where and the and the environment? Yes. You know. Um, so, but. Three years is usually what we go with on average. Yeah, because I've I've had other lubricants that have been given to me, and I found them in my gun room years later, and I cracked the thing, and it was like, OMG, that shit stunk <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so you know obviously you know, another thing that everyone will talk about is bio based, um, and you can look right. on the back of our, you know, our seal. We're USC bio based. And I think we're at like seventy eight percent, and then you know there was a time that that was a big thing and somebody said well you know uh, one of your competitors is 98 percent bio-based and that's great except that's like you know it'll go rotten faster if you're more bio-based it'll start to grow Ex yeah there you go yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that, when, it, when that happens and you crack that lid and you start using it and your gun smells like like rotten food you know, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's bad. You don't want that crap, no. And you know, I know a lot of stuff is citrus based. You know, that's that's another thing too. You know, solvent wise. And, and, you know, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, and, and it's funny too because we um, one of the versions of the the bore and bolt was a citrus based, and it just it didn't work out. Yeah. yeah. So now I, I think like people the, people always ask about. about I like the olive smell that this one has. Yeah, that's the thing, the smell of it. So Well, and you know, people and and that's a big part of actually that's kind of like it, it's the sexy part of the of the solvent. It's got to smell good. Right. Yeah. You know, everybody right. knows a Hoppy's number 9 cuz it smells like it does. Yeah, the only right? problem is you get a headache it, after a while. Well, yeah, I, it doesn't bother me. I, I think it's like it's like it brings Does back it bother you? But Walter, you eat stuff. you eat lead paint for a living. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? So, you know, yeah, the Hoppy's number nine, sure, you, you're cleaning that indoors, you know, your wife or significant other yeah. kicks you out because, and some guys like that, they're like, yes, I get to get out of the house. I, I made that mistake one time in our old apartment. Uh, my girlfriend was out and I was upstairs in the office cleaning a gun. And she came home and was like, what on earth were you doing? And I was like, yeah. I'll open the windows, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, the Boren Bolt has um and it's funny because vince buckles is somebody that we've worked with in the past and uh he mentioned it and i didn't realize it until i poured some bourbon later that night oh it smells is, like it has a it has a slight bourbon tinge to it on the bore and bolt um okay. so it's you know i don't mind it the clp not at all. I mean, the so CLP, what about the taste? What about the taste let's, let's, of the? What about the taste of the CLP? What does it taste let's, like? Let's find out. 
Uh oh. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now, baby we'll face is, baby face is doing a test. He's doing He's a taste test. test. Well, oh wow, it, it really. It smells like a, yeah. It actually really does kind of smell like a, like bourbon, huh? I'm never oh, so okay, baby that. face. We found, no. we found the secret ingredient. Yeah. <laughs> bourbon, yeah. Yeah. Put some hot on it. So, um, <laughs> so wait, don't week. start putting bourbon on your guns, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so the CLP has more of an earthy t tinge to it. So it smells yeah. like it smells and tastes like dirt, and. <laughs> Bottom line is, I think age-wise, all of us grew up in a time where we didn't have iPhones and, and I was given a stick and I made a gun out of it and I went out and I played outside. So I know what dirt tastes like because I got dirty. Yeah. Uh, I, wasn't, exactly. I wasn't playing on an iPad and, and doing right. you know, fidget spinners. But yeah. So that's the taste and smell with the CLP. Again, virtually odorless uh, and it's not bad. Okay, cool. You know what? Let's uh, take a break here from you know from this and switch over to some new stuff. Right. Um, I, I, right. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look up some news. Walter, any crazy news things you want to talk to us about? Yeah, there was. Any enough. stargates or wormholes or oh, hey, interdimensional give me, portals? <laughs> give, me <laughs> give, <laughs> give me a minute. Give me a minute. Oh, look at that. So here, here, while you're looking while you're looking that up, here's something I saw on the firearm blog. So um, yeah. I think lots of folks out there know Strike Industries. They make lots of cool accessories. So Strike Industries announced that on their Facebook that page one? that no, no, no. Strike that was Industries. Another... Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, really, Walter. <laughs> Thanks. I need to get a word out. <laughs> okay, so Strike Industries announced. Uh, if you guys know the Sig P320, which is an improvement on the P250, which is a modular gun. Um, so Strike is going to be making P320 frames. So, and then I can see that Chris has a P320 there. You want to hold on? Let me uh, let me so lock is, it on you. So what is what is okay? Inform me here. They're going to make P320 frames. What is the what's so special about it? Well, go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, Do you want to go, Chris? Well, <laughs> you want to know what's, mean, so what's so special about the P320? No. Why 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 do they need to make a frame for it? Well, because the the I mean this the P three twenty is this modular firearm that they that Sig came out with. So, right. taking the takedown lever out and, and take the trigger pack out, taking the trigger yeah. assembly out. Okay, okay. So okay. Th this is the actual firearm. Right, right, right. This is just a a shell, a forty dollars shell that you can buy all day long and so different colors different this different, different that colors different. different i mean you could this this trigger assembly fits in a subcompact frame in a full size frame okay. i mean you can take this and build a um a subcompact pistol you know uh yeah. with the there's, same there's a lot okay. of possibilities here of what okay. you can do i mean I for just, example when mac was doing testing of of his uh sig p320 he famously like melted the frames and things like that. Wow. Um, you know, he I really, don't. Huh? Yep. Yeah, he, he did. Really did. Damn. Yeah. yeah. This was, but this you know, was... he did a burn down. I think he put over a thousand rounds through the gun, and, and right. like within fifteen minutes or something. <laughs> oh, okay. That, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So it's not. It's, I'm not saying it's like a horrible yeah. thing, but but by having these frames, not only can you change the colors and all that, but you can get different. Uh, you can get different grip angles, different you know sizes, all kinds of things. Okay. You can even you can even make different guns. You know, potentially you can have someone build a carbine and all, and then you just drop the uh, trigger assembly or the uh, chassis or whatever you want to call it into the gun, and it's a completely different gun. Right, right, right. Well, okay. You know. And so, I mean, I think this at Strike Industries doing it. Obviously, you know, you, you get companies out there like Glock, uh, and then you got Magpul that comes out with the P Mag to you know to subsidize the demand for the Glock magazines. These SIGs, they're in high demand right now. I mean, I just ordered a couple more um, grip modules. Now, the grip modules, by the way, it comes in you know a different size, so carrier compact, and then comes in small, large, or medium for your hand size. But they were out for a long time. So, you know, I mean, good on Strike Industries for seeing the the opportunity. Yeah, in my mind. Okay. Hank, I got something right up your line here. Okay. On Fox News. 
Uh -oh. ready? Get ready. All right. Hit me with what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Arkansas man arrested accusing of having sex with family's pet donkey. Jesus Christ. Oh, really? Really, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> Was this a male donkey or a female donkey? I haven't read the story, but... <laughs> We want, to know, we want to know if the donkey had the Donkey Kong. I don't or, think he was cared too much as long as it was a warm, you know what. So. That'll ask me. That'll ask me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I, I don't think I could thank you for that, Walter. <laughs> you needed a laugh, <laughs> right? You needed a laugh, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, and then uh, I think there's some people that want to know what this gun is behind. I know what it is. Don't say it. What is it? Okay, what is it, Walter? Hold what it up. Is it? That is yeah, the okay, F is FPB. FPB? What the hell is that? It's the gun. It's, okay, tell us about what an FPB is. This it's is from, not. It's from Portugal. Oh, it's from Portugal because and it, uh, and it shares the same uh, bolt as an MP40. Okay, look, I'm muzzling you. Oh, uh, MP40. I thought it was a. At first, I yeah. thought it was a grease gun or something. Well, oh, by the way, this is not even a real gun. This is like a movie prop or something. It's not a functioning gun. But yeah, it's it's. So it's, it came in. Yeah, it came into Big Daddy Guns in someone's collection, and then they realized this is not even a real gun. <laughs> so I went over there and claimed it because I was like, oh, we could we could hang that on the wall. Yeah, but it's, it's made. Cool. It's made yeah. with parts from the uh, Portuguese F F B P. Okay, do you have one of those, Walter? Can we? No, I don't. No, I don't. Oh, I've had to, okay. I've had the parts in the past, but I never built one. So yeah, we should build one. Let's build one so we can actually shoot this. It, it looks well, pretty cool. Um, looks you can cool. get the parts kit probably from IMA. Okay. Um, you know, then we can talk. Oh, okay. I gotta get the parts kit. Probably yeah. cheap parts. I've got to try to hang. Guessing. Okay, this, I, I, this I is not that. hanging properly back on the wall without <laughs> making a mess. I saw that back there, and I was going to ask you about it when we got a break yeah. here between you know donkey sex and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You would have to go break for the donkey sex. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. <laughs> This is donkey sex. I see. I see a, a whole clip. With, this is gonna be a clip where, like, uh, Walter, we have oh, the no, president. No. We have the president of Rand COP on right now, Walter. <laughs> What's happening? Chris is. Uh, I, did, Chris right now is into. composing a letter to me. Dear Hank Strange, you're fired. You're fired. please don't call us anymore. No, listen. All of that, all of that would have been accepted, but then he said he had frog lube on a gun, and I was like, "Oh, well, that's it." <laughs> you, you asked of me to look at the news, and that was on the news. Yeah. So I'm sorry. that's what you come up with. Yeah, yeah. that's what I get. I deserve well, that. <laughs> I deserve it. It's true. Let's see what else there is on Fox. I deserve it. Um, you know what? It's cool. I saw there was this. Um, uh, actually, Babyface sent me this. Uh, this is on the Truth About Guns. Trailblazer Firearms has this new 22LR single shot life card. So basically, cool. it looks like a thicker version of a card. You kind of like unfold it and you have a 22 for emergencies. Oh, have you seen the outfit that's doing the fold up Glock? Yes, oh. there's a, there's, yeah. they're doing a they're that doing cool fold up. Yeah. That's. Huh. that's what, what what's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> yeah, I saw it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You can tell. Listen, Chris. Nothing. Uh, talk, nothing, talk nothing about donkeys. You can say whatever you want nothing, to about donkeys. <laughs> nothing sacred. Go for it. Yeah. Go oh, ahead, Chris. I just. I mean, it's. I just think it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, they say it. It's. It's more concealable. I, how is it more concealable? Because the grip doesn't stick out. Now it's just a big block that yeah, you it, have to. But if it's easier to walk with a big block than it would be to yeah, walk you, with a Glock. It, so. It's not even the concealability; is the how quickly can you deploy it? Like, can I? Is it going to deploy faster or easier to conceal than my Glock forty three? No. <laughs> you not only have to now rack the slide, but you have to put it together. You know, Decepticons transform from yeah. Megatron. Like, Hold on a second, dude! Don't kill me yet. Let me show something really cool. This is like magic. Be, yeah, like it'd be only cool if you had the 1984 Transformer, you know, sound effects that went along with it when it yeah. transformed. Or like, if you can do that trick that um, what's his name, um, Chris? Uh, what's the name of that actor in um, that was in the Magnificent Seven? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, yeah, if you can do that magic trick that Chris Pratt did. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if people out there saw The Magnificent Seven, but... Chris I saw Pratt, it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, have, you seen, have, you, have you seen the original one? Yes, Walter, of course. Well, uh, <laughs> I, you know, you always, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, I'm not that young. I have seen the original one. <laughs> okay. But in the, okay, so in the, the new Magnificent Seven, Chris Pratt has this little British bulldog. Um, oh, okay. 
It's a Webley. It's a Webley Bulldog. And actually, that actual gun belongs to another sponsor of the channel, Sam Andrews. Sam Andrews. The gun in the movie belongs to Sam Andrews. He lent it to the uh, to the filmmakers so that you know he, they lent it to uh, to the filmmakers so Chris Pratt could do that scene. So if you could do a little magic trick and distract you, <laughs> the guy that's trying to kill you. <laughs> actually, yeah. those 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 Webley uh, Bulldogs were super cheap handgun that was imported by the thousands yeah not, from england uh, yeah. back you know turn of the century and stuff so yeah i've had not a couple a, of them actually yeah not anymore well, not yeah, anymore yeah. yeah um i actually sam you know sam's like a, a collector of british guns you know so i don't know if i'm supposed to talk about this on air but he was telling me that he or that he ordered a gun and it came and when he went to open it it was a muffler <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the gun part. It somehow got mixed up. <laughs> Ooh. Ow. Yeah, yeah, but I think they got they got the, all that sorted out. So oh, well, that's good. I'm I'm trying to get Sam to come on. I don't know if he's gonna want to talk about that because it's not it's not pleasant. <laughs> uh, oh, so and and in honor of Chris, right now you're not in Connecticut, right? No, I am not. I am in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, oh, you're, in the, you're in the gun free zone. I yeah, mean, a I gun, you're, you're a gun. No. You can have whatever you want in Georgia. Yeah, yeah a, very true. Yeah, yeah a free gun zone. Free gun reverse. zone. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry free sorry, gun sorry, zone. Sorry, 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 yeah. yeah. So now the thing is, Rand, Rand CLP is, is based in Connecticut, right? Yes, they are. Yeah. What the hell is up with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, uh, it was, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. That's like being blunt, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, what are you gonna do, Connecticut? I mean, listen, it's and not you're and you're not gonna be staying in you're in you're in the free the free state of Georgia right now. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Yeah, you're I, you know, moving. You're moving uh, am, to I'm Connecticut. Moving, I'm moving back behind uh enemy lines. <laughs> uh, I, I have are you sure be... that the RAN CLP has not affected your brain? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it has it, it has no. it. Uh, but a little bit more. Yeah, no, they need you. They need you to move back over there, right? Well, you're, yeah, yeah, you know, that's what we got to do. But um, yeah. yeah, Connecticut, uh, it, it it was okay until uh, until Sandy Hook happened, obviously. Uh, and then they used that to get some things passed that shouldn't be passed. Um, you know, it's a 10-round mag uh, rule in effect. So you can carry as many 10-round mags as you want. <laughs> Um, but you can't have more than 10 rounds in your Mac. Um, you know, ARs are a, a weird situation there. You gotta, yeah, you, uh, you can buy ARs, right? But they have to be post-ban ARs or something? Well, you, you can buy pre-ban ARs. Pre-ban, right? pre -ban, excuse me. Yeah. Pre -ban. Um, and then you can buy ARs that are Connecticut compliant. So can't have a pistol grip, can't have a break. Um, uh. You know, it, there's like there, there's like it's like an algorithm that you have to figure out in order yeah. to get an AR. That I, I know you're looking forward to this move. Then. Oh, yeah, no, so, um, but you know you can't have any mags that are over ten rounds, so you, you're stuck with just just craziness. But anyway, um, you know it 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 is what it is. We we've done it before. We can do it again. So it's not that uh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, you see where um, uh, federal judge is threatening to overturn all of California's gun crap. Needs to, which it, would be good. Which yeah. would be, yep. which would be a good thing, and it would be a good thing for states yeah. like. So check, so check this out, guys. Um, the Tyven Show just pledged like thirty bucks to us in the chat. Whoa! So that we can, he says, this is to buy two bottles of Rand CLP to give away. <laughs> That's cool. Wow. So can we buy two bottles of Nod Creep to give away? No, no, baby face. Save your <laughs> alcoholism. <laughs> for, okay, go ahead. Try, baby face. Maybe you get to. Maybe you'll get some knob creek. creek for us to some, drink away. Somebody help out, baby face, and let him get some knob creek. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> you, you right. got some. Hey, Hank needs it. I got half a bottle. You need oh, to I come. Need. You need to. You need to come up the knob creek. Go to the machine gun ship. That's yeah. right. Go shoot some machine guns. And uh, and then and then our friend the real Cujo uh, pledged twenty bucks. I'm not sure what that's for, so I guess that can go to the Knob Creek. But I don't know if I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if real Cujo's going to approve that going to the going to the Knob Creek. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so listen, we were talking about Connecticut, right, Chris, and all the stuff. 
So yeah. in D.C., um, so there's this thing that says Connecticut strict gun laws. This is on, I don't know, this is on patch.com. <laughs> so <laughs> Connecticut strict gun, law, gun, gun control laws may soon be lifted by the federal government. Yay! So I don't know how likely this is to come back, but it says Washington, D.C., strict gun control laws enacted by Connecticut state politicians in 2013 after more than two dozen school kids and staff members at Sandy Hook. It goes talking about Sandy Hook. Um, so one gun-loving, <laughs> they call him gun-loving Republican congressman from upstate New York has his way. U.S. Rep. Uh, Chris Collins unveiled new federal legislation Monday called the Second Amendment Guarantee Act. So whose phone, whose phone is going off? Walter? Shut up. Shut Walter's up. looking down. <laughs> First, you chastise me about rifling. <laughs> this is this is hey, Montezuma's revenge. I have <laughs> friends. Sorry, I have friends. Sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. After we were distracted by the the many friend having Walter Keller of Safety Harbor Firearms. So this is called the Second Amendment Guarantee Act, HR three five seven six. If passed into law, this new bill will prevent all state, county, and city governments from enforcing local rifle and shotgun regulations stricter than those at the federal level. <laughs> Sounds good. Never Sounds good. Happen. Yeah. yeah. Never gonna happen. I mean, I you know, but then again, you know, you never what? know. You know, you got to start someplace. Yeah. And, and you got to yeah. make the, you got to make these you got to make these leftists freak out constantly. You got to. Make them have a b nervous breakdown. Yeah. They keep them on their toes. Yeah, so, what I mean, does this does this give you any hope, Chris? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> He's a realist. <laughs> no, no. No. Chris is like, I, no, no, no. My only hope is uh, that uh, somehow the company just moves to a free state down the road. <laughs> yeah, on down to Florida. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you you, you can been, always come live been, in Florida. There's lots been, of companies. Been there, done that. Love the gunshine state, but uh, can't do that anymore. Uh, if <laughs> if anything, somewhere out west. Oh, oh, well, what are you saying about Florida, Chris? <laughs> well, he'll get arrested <laughs> if he comes on back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not the like sheriff that, looking but, for him right now. You know, the, what is it no, about they, Florida you don't well, like? Is listen, it the humidity? So, no, so Florida has. Two sayings in my book, and remember, I lived there for eight years, so it's the gunshine. Uh -huh. It's a gunshine state. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember correctly, yeah. I think it was the first state to hit one million concealed carry permits. Uh, and the second thing that it goes by is that it's a uh, sunny place for shady people. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not know. present know. company excluded. Yeah, I mean, you know, the rest of us are from Florida, right? Exactly, present company excluded. Uh huh. And no, I wait, I want to be down with the shady people. <laughs> I think we are. Yeah, we're shady. Okay. No, you're in. Are you? You're shady. where? You're in North Florida, right? Orlando. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. in South. Yeah. I was in South Florida. Yeah, you can oh, talk bad. You problem? can talk bad about Safety Harbor all you want to. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 hey. No, the worst. The worst part of Florida, I think, is West Palm Beach. Is my least favorite, and I live there. I don't know. So. Miami's pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, um. So, yes, yeah, so, you know, I, I agree with you parsh partially. Some things in Miami are not so bad. <laughs> you know, I could take Miami for like uh, maybe 48 hours. <laughs> that's, that's a stretch for me. Oh, really? I, don't, I used to never go further than uh, Hollandale Beach Boulevard, but further south than Hollandale Beach Boulevard. Oh, oh so you were, you were like real South Florida then. Oh, yeah. Walter? What you know that this is like a, you know this is going on iTunes. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Hey, I, I'm reading. I'm reading Fox's. Uh, is know, that uh, your phone that's ringing again? No, sir. <laughs> oh, N O N O Mofo. Okay. <laughs> well, now we have to investigate whose phone's ringing. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Who was no, it? Was it you, Babyface? On me. I got an iPhone. It's got oh, an iPhone. Okay. Right so here. then that only leaves Chris, but he's he's. You know, he's from Rand CLP. We're trying to win Rand CLP back at this point. <laughs> no, mine, mine's, mine is iPhone, and it's been on vibrate since the start of the yeah. show. I will, I will officially turn the volume down to nothing. <laughs> All right, there we go. But yeah, I keep Walter. reading, I keep reading this stuff on what? Fox, and you don't want me to say the next one. Uh, okay, go one. ahead. You might as well oh, at gosh. this point. <laughs> I mean, okay, automatic car wash is vulnerable to hacking. Can attack cars and occupants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, right above, right, a, right above that, 
Teen gets hammer stuck in mouth after dare. Hmm. How the fuck? <laughs> WTF over? <laughs> yeah. You're finding all of this on Fox, huh? Yeah. Well, she's got the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess. I guess. Oh, hey, wait, wait, hang on. Connecticut residents get hate mail for flying American flags. Yeah. Well, God, it's terrible. Uh, Chris, I swear it's worse than this. We're <laughs> actually on our best behavior right yeah, now. This is pretty good for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys, I don't know if anyone got the memo that we have ran COP on here. Oh, you well, know, they're very professional. <laughs> Forget about me. What do, what do I do? You know, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, here's something we don't know already. Foreign infiltration feared amid security risk in Pentagon immigrant recruit program. Duh. <laughs> what, what, what do we what do we got to do to figure out you don't bring people that don't like you into your? Yeah. Did this ha did this have something to do with Debbie Wasserman Schultz? Oh well, she's got a spot too in here. We can. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that that whole controversy with those people that they hired that. You know, um, oh, the, the terrorist, the IT guys. Yeah, that is nobody's talking about that anymore. That's well, totally course, disappeared. Of course, is not because it doesn't meet, fit the the narrative. Yeah, so, you know, so we're not we're not talking about that anymore. So, what about Venezuela? Like Venezuela is actually having uh, a vote. Yeah, you, know the, you see, they arrested the uh, or they they uh, collected up the opposition leaders. Yeah, that's going to work out real well. They're going to have a nice day in a prison cell somewhere. You know, and on yeah um, well but yeah i mean venezuela i think there was it says uh venezuelans took to the polls this weekend voting on a proposal that would create a constitutional assembly likely to grant president nick uh, nicholas maduro's ruling socialist party virtually unlimited power venezuela is going insane they, they're, they're, they're not going insane they're going straight socialist it's you, you can you can thank our former fearless leader for letting that go as long as it did i mean oh, lord yeah, because it's no it's no coincidence that uh, Venezuela basically took away guns from people. No. Nope. Oh, yeah. The typical socialist uh, way of doing things. They yeah. went straight through the socialist agenda, and now they're – I mean, you can't even find food in the grocery stores, from what I understand. So it's how like, long do you think it's going to be – I've seen it. It's, it's really bad right now. Yeah, it is. So how long do you yeah. think it's going to be before, like, we got to put boots on the ground in Venezuela? No, they're not going to put boots – no, 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 no. That's not going to happen. It's going to have to just – People are just going to have to rise up. With what? Donkeys? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can you know, see it happening. You don't like that, huh, Walter? If you, if, you did, if you didn't have a gun, you'd, you'd do it with a pitchfork. And trust me, you could pitchfork the guy with the gun and take it. Sorry. I can see it happening soon. Yeah. It, it's yeah. getting that desperate at this point, I feel You know, like. if you're that hungry, you don't give a shit anymore, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, they've, I, they've had how many how – many Deaths related to uh, like government over overreach. So people protesting and they just <laughs> kill just a couple kill people. Them. Kill them. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think they're up to a couple hundred at this point. Yeah. Well, Brazil's not very far away from this too. So just be oh, be forewarned. Yeah. All hell's gonna break loose in South America. Right. Lola wants <laughs> to know what Lola wants to know why we stopped talking about the life card. I guess she likes this. Lola, which life card? <laughs> we did talk about the twenty-two. The, the uh, it's from Trail Trailblazer Firearms, and it's a single shot twenty two called the Life Card. It's on the truth about guns. Basically, it's a twenty two that folds, you know. And so when you okay. unfold it, it's got a trigger. You guys, here, let me see. I will pop. I will pop this into the um, to the hangout window here, so you guys can take a look at. It. I'll, and I'll then I'll put it in the ch I'll put it in the chat so other people can take a look at it because Lola's saying that we skipped over this. I'd, but, rather have, uh, I'd, rather have the, I'd rather have the Megatron Glock. You like the Glock better? <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Now, you don't what? like you don't like you know. Okay, that that folding Glock. Do you have the same feelings about Magpul's folding gun? Which, Wait, Magpul has a folding gun? Yeah, they did. They never built it. They never made it commercially, but they made one. It was at Shot Show, probably I'm gonna look that up. seven years ago, something like that. Hmm. Um, and everybody thought that was the greatest. Yeah, now. What was it? What was it? A handgun? Yeah, it's FMG nine. Yeah. Um, oh, holy shit! That thing's hideous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is the ugliest thing I've seen. I guess we, I don't need to go look it up then. 
Well, just Look a at the FMG9. Once again, Lola, they don't want to talk about the lifeguard 22. I'm going to go find that lifeguard <laughs> thing here. So. Yeah, no one wants to talk oh, about it. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. That was in RoboCop. <laughs> no. Oh, the F oh yes, the, that was in RoboCop, actually. Yes, it was. That was in I RoboCop saw that, too. The, the kid. Yeah. The kid had yeah. it. There you go. Yeah, see, there you go. But uh, Walter wouldn't know anything about RoboCop. I know what about Robo RoboCop. Cop. What kind? Okay, smartass. What kind of <laughs> what kind of fifty caliber do you use in RoboCop? Uh, oh, come on, come on! You don't know, do you? <laughs> have no. a nice, <laughs> have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did they use? What fifty cal did they use? I don't remember the exact name of it, but I've actually handled one. It's, okay, the, how is that? How is that getting well, over I mean, on I, me? <laughs> Well, trust me, I would. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not legit, Walter. You have to know also. You can't chastise me for not knowing and you don't know. Okay, all right. Well. That's like me saying, um, okay, what about what kind of servos did uh, RoboCop use in his suit? Do you know? Not a clue, baby. Yeah, not okay. I don't know either. There you go. <laughs> CGI okay. servos. Yeah. So, okay. So, there we go. We're not – so, what? Did, have you guys seen the 22, the lifeguard? Lifeguard 22. I'm trying to lifeguard. find it. Yeah, I'm, lifeguard. Trying to, I'm trying to unsee it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to unsee it. Um, how many, what is it? Like a one shot, I think. It's a one oh, shot. Totally. I think it's cool. I would, I would, I have no idea what I would do with it, but I would totally have it. Depending on price. If it's like 150 bucks, I'd buy that just to play around with. Yeah, listen, can I tell you guys something? And this is in all seriousness. What Terrible guns are great to collect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. They're, they're not going to sell them any of them. Yeah, if they actually come out with any gun that you think is horrible, like this, is a, what was the, there was another 22 that you could basically put in your hand and it had almost like a pump. What was that thing called? Do you remember oh, the, the Stinger? The Stinger? Was it called the Stinger? It folded? No, there was this little tiny 22 that came out maybe, oh, I want to oh, say like three years ago yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, funny it's looking. The zip, the zip gun. The zip gun, yeah, the zip gun. Yeah. You can't find those anymore. Well, because they were yeah. a miserable failure, that's why. Yeah, they're so a that, terrible gun, yeah. Yeah, always collect the terrible guns. <laughs> I can't they're disappear. It's like the Remington, the first Remington R51, you know, not the original back oh, in the days, oh but God, the ones that they came out with a couple years ago that was just a complete disaster. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um you know, um Brand CLP doesn't have anything to do with the Freedom Group, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Because, <laughs> oh, you know, like, Chris oh, looks like he's making a lots of mental notes <laughs> about the Hank Strain situation. No more lube for R51. you. R51 yeah. was the one with the rotating barrel, right? The lifeguard. It didn't, it no. didn't unlock like a, a typical barrel. It rotated. It had like a camming action to it, I think. Uh... I don't know. Like, uh, I blocked it out PX4, of my mind. The PX4 pistol, the Beretta PX4, has the same like camming action on the barrel. I hate that design. Yeah. Yeah. Trailblazer firearms. Hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, R. Hendry says a lot of people shot themselves with the zip gun. <laughs> 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 oh, there you go. That's probably true. Okay, so folks want to know, Chris. <laughs> Let's get back back to business. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Let me just, you see, Chris, I actually wore like a shirt with a collar. I, you know, I almost put one on, but then you were like, <laughs> do you swear? And I was like, oh, all right. Well, we're casual. Yeah, we're going easy <laughs> today. So folks want to know, what's your EDC, Chris? <laughs> Let's talk about something. Oh, good. Yeah, now we can talk about it. Um, well, most days it is the SIG P320. Yeah. Um, nice color, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I do have the FDE, and then we have some black uh, frame and slide as well. So um, I do EDC with the P320 um, with an uh, G-code incog holster. Uh, I will get crazy every once in a while if I'm wearing shorts and carry the Smith & Wesson m and shield. Um, yeah, and what is that extender you have on the magazine? Uh, so this is the Hive technologies plus two extension so it fits on the on the eight round mag and it gives it 10 so you know Cal, uh, Connecticut carry gives me a full-size grip and carry 10 okay, rounds you're Connecticut ready already <laughs> Connecticut ready already yeah. so uh, you know that's that's my EDC as far as gun obviously I carry a, uh, a variety of different knives I mean I have a bench made some zero tolerances and uh, you know and uh, a surefire flashlight um, okay 
and there's so you're always, a flashlight guy. I know there's there's guys who don't care. Yeah, flashlight. yeah, flashlight guy. Or um, you know, in the winter in Connecticut, I'm fortunate enough to where I can um, conceal something a little bit larger. So I'll carry yeah. a weapon light on it. We'll do a Surefire yeah. X300 and oh, a okay. tourniquet and a tourniquet. Can I give you a suggestion for uh, Connecticut in the winter for something for you to conceal carry? Sure. <laughs> the uh, standard manufacturing DP12. <laughs> ah, right. Yes. I yes. mean, I'm, so, I'm yeah. not even kidding. <laughs> you could tell. Seriously, that thing is completely Connecticut legal. You know, so you can go. You can buy that in Connecticut, and that day, you, you know, you can go. You can buy it. You can go into standard manufacturing and buy one. Do your background check and walk out with it. And in Connecticut, you know, you got a nice big coat, man. You could conceal carry that bad boy. Put it underneath your parka. <laughs> I think you should get one of the uh, the 1911s that they came out with. The Case Harden 1911s. Those things are cool. Yeah. I don't, the, know if you're gonna be any, I don't know if you're going to be anywhere close to standard manufacturing, but you should definitely go. Yeah, I don't, we'll you, yeah, I don't know if your office in Connecticut is close to those guys. Uh, I, you know, I'm not too sure. I'll have to find out where they are. But, um... And we'll, we'll take a look. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So, but just remember, Hank Strange gave you that pointer. EP12. <laughs> That's I, totally I, legal. In, I'm serious. It's totally legal in Connecticut. Listen, you have I, many rounds I, you, I, you can I put? like it. Yeah, I man. Like the punch. Yeah. Have you ever shot a DP12? I have not. Yeah. It's I, been, I'm going to put this out there, and uh -huh. uh, it's not something I'm super proud of, but at the end of the day, whatever. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that intimate with shotguns. I mean, I'm just not a, I've never been a shotgun kind of guy. I mean, I believe Ooh. in pistols. I mean, okay. they're standard manufacturing. They're in New Britain, hard hit in New Britain, Connecticut. Um, so they're <laughs> not that far away. Uh, we got, we have three out there. We have hard hit New Britain, uh, two pistol Bristol and gun, <laughs> gun, and gun wave in New Haven. Huh. I'll go grab my I'll go grab my carry since you guys like shotguns. Hold on. So yeah. So what's up? So you've never you've never shot. You don't shoot shotguns. You've I don't. Never shot I don't shoot. I, I yes. I've shot shotguns. Um, but I don't. I don't shoot shotguns. I don't have a shotgun. I don't hunt. I don't shoot skeet. I don't do trap. Um, so never really got into shotguns. Okay. Always always wanted a beautiful over and under. Um, just, just haven't really got there. Um, so, uh, not saying that I won't, uh, you know, a, a good there friend of mine. I got my uh, carry piece. There you yeah. go. <laughs> my, my, my 1897. Is 20, that a uh, 28 inch barreled Winchester? Is that That's a real 97? Awesome. It's a 97. Yeah. Model 97. It's not Shycom though, is it? It's. No, no, this is a Winchester model 97 from. Oh, wow. That's cool, man. I, have I ever, no, you've never shown me that. You never, no, I don't think you ever shot this one. No, that's pretty cool, man. Hammer, hammer um, fired. You got to be careful. With, you got to be careful with those things with that hammer. If you choke oh. up on that thing and pump it, it'll bite you so bad it'll make you. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love the. the uh, this was still when you could slam fire these things, so you can oh, load it up and just. Yeah. <laughs> How long is that? Is that like for like uh, been in the family for some time or? Yeah. Um, there's a pawn shop. I got this like two years ago. There's a pawn shop down in downtown that was going out of business. But you got and a good one day. Deal. I was like, it was like four hundred dollars. It was an average deal. Mm. Yeah. Probably about what it's worth. Yeah. Um. You know. But it's fun. We got a trench gun. <laughs> that thing, man. Turn that thing into a trench gun. Oh, uh, I wish I. I need to get a second because this is a takedown model. So you can. I need to get a second upper that has that shorter barrel on it. Because that. Oh, we can. We can fix that short barrel thing. <laughs> cut down, <laughs> cut down the twenty-eight inch barrel. Yeah. So Walter, uh, Chris is not really a shotgun guy. I, I think we should get we should get Chris a keg twelve. <laughs> that's going. That's going full on crazy shotgun, right? Yeah. yeah. The keg twelve is about this <laughs> long, Chris. Keep that's what you need. That's what you Come need on. in Connecticut. You know. Wait, is uh, that is that legal in Connecticut? Uh, they, don't, they don't do AOWs in the short barrel shotgun. Oh in man. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be cool for you to have in your car, Chris, in Connecticut. But I guess they don't do. I guess we're back to a DP12, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Sure, get you sure. get you a nice DP12. You know, make it a truck gun. <laughs> Put yeah. It right in, there we go. You know, I mean, because that's, that's what I need in Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, here's the thing, man. The DP12 is um, 
two feeding tubes, two barrels, you know, and you pump it once and you can pull the trigger twice before you need to pump it again. Okay. So, you, you know, I'm not familiar with it, but yeah, you can get some serious rounds up in there. I'm trying to remember the round count. Um, you know, I think it's like 12, 14 rounds or something like that, that you can get in there. Um, it's at least uh, seven in each, or maybe maybe it's six in each tube or something you like that. Go, but you have to go for those Aguila mini shells, and you can do yeah. like double. Yeah, the Aguila mini. I don't know. Did we test it with those? We haven't. We, we should though. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so people want to know, Chris, if you can just tell us about the rifle laws in Connecticut. <laughs> oh, people want to know how terrible they are. They're terrible. I mean, they're really, you know, they're they're. Uh, they're brutal. Uh, you can have a hunting rifle. Uh, AR has to be, like I said, it's like an algorithm of what you can have what it, and, and what features it can have. Um, so if it's got a pistol grip, you can't have uh, a break on it, or, or you have to have a pin stock, and uh, it's just, you know. It's California. Like right yeah. yeah, as you say, it sounds uh, like they're right up there in California. Yeah, yeah no, the, you can't, no 30 round mag, nothing over 10 rounds. Um, Jesus. Yeah. You know. um, Reven Olfer is saying you need a license to buy ammo in Connecticut. Yeah. And he's also saying that um, the DP 12 holds 16, he believes. So I could be okay. wrong. Yeah. Let's so you, need, you need to have either a hunting permit, an ammo permit, or your concealed permit to buy, um, to buy ammo in Connecticut. That's straight crazy. But you can you can you can cross the border and go someplace and buy it, right? Well, no. Um, I mean, the one close by. Every, um, everybody. Well, Massachusetts, you know, Massachusetts, has to live there. <laughs> Massachusetts, <laughs> you you have to. Massachusetts is even worse than Connecticut. Um, and then you got. I mean, you got New York. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good luck to you on that so one. So Connecticut is you know is surrounded by. Uh, you have to go. Connecticut, well, but listen, I mean, Connecticut is easier to get a CCW than it is in New York. Uh, uh, probably not New Hampshire, but it's definitely easier than New York for sure. Well, New Hampshire is really easy. That's the yeah. live, live free state. New York, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. yeah. You know, New York is still May issue, whatever. You know, exactly. I know, May issue. Yeah, I know people are fighting that. Okay, so listen, you know, we've been doing this for some time. I just want you to go over one more time, Chris, about the the Rand CLP um, product line before okay. you go. You know, if you could just run us through it really quick. And um, sure. so, uh, let me just go back to where I was here. All twelve. So. Um, we have our flagship product, the RAN CLP, non-toxic, nano-infused, um, with a, uh, I'm sorry, flagship product is what we started with. Great, uh, great lubricant, amazing protectant, good cleaner. Um, we came out with our RAN Born Bolt, which is also a non-toxic carbon cutting solvent. Now, this is not infused with nano because you don't want this to stay on the firearm. You want to use it, get it off, and then yeah. put the CLP on it. So, yeah, so after you use that, then after you use that, then you would go back to the CLP, right? If you were cleaning it, you were bringing the, the gun back to zero. So, so if, yeah, so if I, if I were to, you know, break this gun down and clean it, I would break it down. I would obviously remove all the ammunition, make sure that it was clear, um, break down the firearm, lay, lay the parts out, and I would spray it with the Boron Bolt. Um, the Boron Bolt aerosol, the 10 ounce aerosol is awesome. You got the little uh, little straw up here, creates a foaming action. So I'll spray it down the barrel. I'll let it sit there for a little bit, spray the other parts. I'll, you know, I'll bust out the cleaning kit. I'll use the utility brush. I'll, I'll scrub everything down, run a brush through the barrel, run a patch through the barrel, make sure it's clean. Um, and then I'll assemble it, put it back together, and I'll lube up all the parts with the RAM CLP. Okay, very cool. Yeah, so now I, I totally forgot to talk to you about this, Chris, before we started. <laughs> so I think what would be cool to do, since we might be introducing some folks out there who are new to this, maybe it will be cool to give out some samples, maybe like, uh, I don't know, like give out, like we can get like five sample sets or something like that and we'll give it out to some people who actually comment and share this video. Sure. How about that? Yep. Yeah. 
So we'll we'll do that. We'll get some uh, sample stuff from Chris from Rand CLP. That way, you know, we can send it off. So we'll give it to like the first five people who actually comment and share this video, and we'll get this stuff out to you. So you could try it out and see, you know, if we're if we're uh, you know being upfront with you or not. You could tell us what you think about it and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, and that's what we tell people. You know, uh, the proof is in the pudding. Try it. Let us know what you think. I mean, end of the day. You know, it's going to come down to, uh, to to what you guys think. And just just so you know, this is. Oh, look at the puppy! Hold on. Wanted, <laughs> a dog. wanted to join the uh, the podcast. That's, that's a pit. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. It's a blue nose, and she's uh, she's let me know that she's she ate a couple hours ago, and she's like, "All right, it's time, I gotta, to go. yeah, I got to do, do my business." <laughs> <laughs> Mine's gonna be there soon too. So yeah, it's time. Okay, so let me uh, let me give everyone else. A ch was that it, Chris? Did you want to add anything else before we go, uh, uh, well, folks? And then how to get in last, touch with? Lastly, yeah. we we launched the the hog grease heavy applications weapons grease can be used for your suppressors, locking uh, lugs on your bolt guns, uh, shotgun chokes, um, or if you're gonna store the weapon for a long period of time. Um, website is www.ranclp.com. I mean, check us out on Facebook and Instagram and we're here. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. And keep us, you know, posted because I know there's going to be some changes and things like that going on with Rand. We'd love to know if you guys add new products and all that kind of good stuff. Sure. We'll keep you in the know. Absolutely. Thanks. Walter, you want to tell us what you got going on? Facebook, Instagram. Um, Twitter, all of yeah, all the um, social media, you know, social media stuff. Um, actually, working on we got some new stuff. Might have some new website. Um, ooh, uh, is that called Big Donkey for You? Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you back. Don't worry. <laughs> it to comes around, goes around. Don't forget it. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, so we might be, uh, uh, I know we are going to upgrade, uh, change the website, um, going to integrate, make two websites, well, anyways, it's in the works, so um, stay tuned. Absolutely. Okay, so stay tuned to Safety Harbor. Okay, Babyface, what you got going on, man? That's really it. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have some stuff coming up. Uh, I think we're going to test out some suppressor shooting and whatnot whenever I got some time, so we'll have something yeah. cool coming. Yeah, we got some cool things going on. We also need to build up the – we've got a 308 from Stag Arms, which is also in Connecticut. Shout yes. out to the Stag Arms Yay. dudes. Yeah, good friends of, of ours. You know, you should definitely say what's up to those guys, Chris, when you're oh, yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. so what – we're building up a 308 from Stag Arms, and we'll probably throw in some RAN CLP stuff for whoever Make we it. give that away to. Make it happen. Yeah, so we've got that going on, Babyface. <laughs> I'm ready to build. You know that. I'll build yeah. anything, anytime. Oh, hey, Babyface, <laughs> you, you have any experience with the M14? Hey, M14? I mean, yeah. I, I've worked on my own M1 Garand. Have you ever barreled one? It's basically the same action. You ever put oh. the barrel on one? <laughs> Um, I've put the barrel on uh, not an M1A. I've done it on a, a, a run that by us again. Also, let's take a look at that again. Yeah, this one here is a project. I need to I need to mount the barrel properly. Uh, yeah, um, we could do it. And then it's um, gonna uh, get, gonna get stuck into this um, yeah. this E2 stock. Oh, nice. And um, yeah, this will be a sweet gun. It's a uh, it's all GI parts, but they're all like barely used parts. So yeah. nice. Yeah, I um, cool. can do it. Yeah. yeah. So there you go, and I will show my fake gun once again, <laughs> so the headlines can be Hank Strange shows a fake gun. On Portuguese, show. Portuguese FBP. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Listen, even if it's fake, you know we like it. I mean, we like fake boobies. Yeah. You know. Nothing wrong with that, you know. Different, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, it's too late to get into the booby conversation. Definitely <laughs> debate. Yeah. All right, so I want to thank everyone for watching, commenting. If you didn't get your answer, your questions answered from Rand CLP, like leave some leave questions here on this video. We'll try to get Chris or some other folks over at Rand CLP. Anybody right? who's got questions can email me as well. Yeah, what what's your email, Chris? Email address is chris at rancelp.com. There you go. So if you guys, you know, want to follow up and, and uh, figure out some things and don't forget, like the first five people that comment on this and share it, will we'll send you out some cool stuff. 
Thanks to everyone that's uh, commenting. I want to thank everyone that sponsors us. Ran COP, so far for as we now. know. For now. <laughs> yeah, for now. <laughs> <laughs> Safety Harbor Firearms. Yay! You know, Andrew's Custom Leather. And definitely Big Daddy Guns <laughs> that gives us this uh, space here, the broadband and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and I definitely want to thank the people that support us on Patreon. It's Patreon slash Hank Strange. Chris, it was really fun, man, being awesome. on with you. Glad you guys had me on. It was a pleasure being yeah. here. Absolutely. So uh, safe travels to you. You're, you're going to Connecticut soon, right? Yep. Uh, Seventeen yeah. days. Awesome. Oof. Safe travels. Uh, you. you know, we'll keep it. We'll keep an eye on you. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. All right. Peace Go out, ahead. guys. All right. Thanks, guys.